In this video, I'm going to show you how a curator can assign new MLST alleles for genomes that have been uploaded to a PubMLST database. After a genome has been uploaded, usually the automated allele tagger will run overnight and will identify and mark any known alleles that are found within a genome sequence. It doesn't, however, identify new alleles, so these need to be done manually. So if we search the database for, uh, for genome assemblies, so we modified the form and we can search on the sequence bin greater than a total length of two megabases. Uh, and the first couple of pages, you find that everything looks okay. But on the third page here, you'll see that there are two isolates which are missing some alleles, um, which have not been found within the genome. So we need to scan those to try and identify these and define the new allele sequences. So if you're logged in as a curator, then you can click on the uh, curator icon at the top of the page and then go to the sequence tag scan page, select the isolates that you want to scan and the loci, so in this case all the all the MLST loci, and then click scan. It will then take, it'll take a couple of seconds and hopefully will identify some new alleles. So in this case, it's found two new alleles. These are close matches to existing alleles. So you see there's 99 percent, 99.75% identical to an existing allele. Um, so these can be uh, can be assigned. Now, if you uh, click the extract link um, in the table, then it will show you the sequence that the scan has found, along with some upstream and downstream flanking sequence. Now we can copy and paste this sequence and use the typing database sequence query page to check that this has been properly extracted, that it looks like existing alleles. And you'll see in this case, it's a very close match. It's a, um, and it aligns properly with the start and stop position of, uh, of, of existing alleles. If you have more than one or two, then you may wish to use a fast A file that's also produced. And you can use this to do a batch sequence query uh, so this, in this case, it will look at both of those sequence to get sequences at the same time. And you'll see, again, these are close matches with a single nucleotide difference. And you'll see that the position on the reference sequence and the query sequence are the same. And that shows that it's, it's starting at the same position um, as the existing allele. So finally, we can use a tab delimited text file that's produced and go to the typing database um, and add those sequences in a batch mode just by copying and pasting that output file. So we select the sender, click Submit, and then these get checked. And finally, you can upload these into the database for assignment. So those new alleles have been assigned. And then you can go back and rescan the genomes. This time, it will, it will find the newly assigned alleles and see you'll find that these are exactly matching and we can tag those and they will get marked within the genomes. So now if we go back and do a query to, to look at those isolates again within the database. So repeat the query and when we look at those records you will see now that those alleles have been filled in in the table. And the only thing that's left to do now is to assign the new sequence type for that uh, newly defined allelic profile. So we can do that by going to the typing database, going into the curator interface, and then selecting a uh, new MLST profile, and then we can enter the allelic profile there. It's also possible to do this in a batch mode. So we enter the profile in, include the sender who sent the actual genome, and that's it, the profile's added to the database. 